Hi, in this short video, we're going to talk about how we can evaluate limits using direct substitution. Now, from the limit laws, we knew that we could use direct substitution if we were just evaluating the limit of a polynomial. Then we could apply some of the other limit laws and say we could use direct substitution on any function composed of polynomials, rational functions, or radical functions, but only on their domains. So for example, with the polynomial x squared plus 2x minus 5, if I try to evaluate the limit as x approaches 3 of that polynomial, I just replace x with 3 and work it out using the order of operation to find that the limit value is 10. Now, what can I do if uh, the uh, limit target, the a value, is not in the domain of my function? I can't use direct substitution, but maybe with some work, I can find another function which is almost the same as my original function, but that is defined when x equals a. If that's the case, then we have a theorem that tells me that the limit value is going to be the same. And that should make sense. If the two functions are the same everywhere except for at x equals a, the limit doesn't care what the function value is, or even if the function is defined when x equals a. So if we've got two functions that agree, then we can use, if we can use direct substitution with one but not the other, well, we can go ahead and use the direct substitution then. And here's an example. Here you've got an expression here. It's not defined when x equals negative 2. But I can do some algebraic work here, factoring, find a common factor, which is x plus 2. x plus 2 over itself is a form of 1. So multiplying by 1 just leaves me with x minus 2. And so here my function f is not defined when x equals negative 2 but my function g is defined when x equals negative 2. So if I want to find the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x squared minus 4 all over x plus 2, I can simplify that to x minus 2 and evaluate the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x minus 2, just using direct substitution, that gives me negative 4. Let's look at a different example. Here I have the limit as h approaches 0 of the quantity 2 plus h squared minus 3 times the quantity 2 plus h plus 2 all over h. I cannot use direct substitution as this is written because I'd be putting 0 in the denominator and division by 0 is undefined. So let's try to do some algebraic simplification. First I'll expand, multiply out uh, the numerator and then I'm going to collect like terms in the numerator. Let me make sure I did that correctly. I have a 4h minus 3h. That gives me h. I have 4 minus 6, give me a negative 2, negative 2 plus 2, 0. So no constants. And then I only have 1h squared. So now I can factor the simplified fraction. 
and see that I have a common factor of h. And now after simplifying, I can use direct substitution and find that the limit value is 1. Now notice that in every step in my algebraic simplification, I had to have the limit as h goes to 0 if I'm using this equal sign. This line, the top line, is only equal to the next line if I include the limit as h goes to 0. So as you're performing this algebra, develop that good habit of always writing down the limit as h goes to 0 of your function. Well, let's look at this example. This example should look familiar. Now, here there are no simplifications to be performed as it's written. I cannot distribute the radical, for example, to the uh, different terms under the radical. That's just not possible. It's uh, not correct algebra. But whenever I see a radical, and another term, one thing I can think of is multiplying by its conjugate. Here I have minus 2, its conjugate will have plus 2. Why is that important? Well, remember we have the product of conjugates. a plus b times a minus b is a squared minus b squared. So, of course, I can't just multiply the top. I have to multiply top and bottom by the same conjugate. After I do that, well, radical t squared plus 4 is just going to be t squared plus 4. And uh, 2 squared, of course, is 4. Now I can simplify that. Collect the like terms. Ah, now I have it t squared as a common factor. t squared over t squared is 1. And now I can use direct substitution. Replace t with the 0 value. And I find that the limit value is 1 fourth. Where did we see this limit before? We tried to evaluate this limit numerically. And actually, what's with relatively large values of t, we were getting uh, a very good approximation. It's only when we got closer and closer to zero that we started to run into trouble and we had doubts about our original approximation. But now we know by doing some algebraic manipulation and direct substitution that the exact value is one fourth. Now here we have another example. Uh, there's no simplifying to be done as it's written, but what we can do is factor the numerator and the denominator. We see that we have a common factor of x plus 2. After simplifying, we can just use direct substitution, replacing x with negative 2. And so I get what? Negative 5 over negative 4, which would be a positive 5 fourths. And here in our last example, again, we're going to want to factor. And we might need a little refresher on the factoring formula for the numerator. And we have the difference of two cubes. So a cubed minus b cubed, we're going to get two factors. The first one is going to be a minus b. The second factor is going to start with an a squared, end with a b squared. In the middle, we have just a b. And so in our example, a is x and b is 2. So I can factor x cubed minus 8 as 
x minus 2 in parentheses as my first factor. And the second factor is x squared plus 2x plus 4. The denominator, just x minus 2 in parentheses times x plus 1 in parentheses. So my x minus 2 is a common factor. I can go ahead and simplify and then use direct substitution to find the value of the limit. In this case, the limit value is 4. I hope you found this video on examples of using direct substitution useful.